Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to do a pretty big unboxing. I don't know what happened, but somewhere from December until now, I just realized it's not December anymore. And lo and behold, I've been getting Fairy Loot and Owl Crate boxes that entire time, obviously. I am a rep for both Fairy Loot and Owl Crate, so I do receive their boxes every single month just in exchange for an honest review. I love getting their boxes. It's honestly a highlight of my month. So I don't know how it's been so long for me to not have unboxed any of these. I do right here have the Fairy Loot and Owl Crate boxes from December and January. I also just got the February ones in the mail, but I'm holding off on filming that. It'll probably be in a separate video. I just felt like six boxes was a little too much to unbox, but expect that video in the next week. Again, I am a rep, so I do have everything linked down below for you guys just in case you want to check out their websites or anything like that. And if you use my name, it is a discount code for both of the websites, but they discount different things. So definitely check down below in my description because it'll have all of that information and more. Yeah, let's get into it. I am really excited, even though I waited three months. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Life has been a lot lately. Maybe, maybe the other unboxing that I'll do will be a life update plus unboxings just because there's been there's been a lot going on. I keep thinking life will slow down and it just keeps speeding up if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm gonna start just with the owl crate from December just because that was the one that was on top and then we'll do the fairy loot. I actually technically unboxed the fairy loot already but because I didn't know it was fairy loot. We'll get to that in a minute. Ooh, I love this card. We have a damsel with like a very devil looking elf with a tail kind of situation. The theme for the month of December was love is a battlefield and this is the spoiler card so I'm just gonna set her down. I rearranged my shelves by the way. I'm obsessed. In the next video we'll talk about why that's kind of disappointing but anyways. I feel like I always show you guys how much crinklies are in there but this wasn't that bad. Ooh a hand cream. I've actually been really obsessed with lotions lately. Don't know what that's about. Well I do. I'm very dry. The the name of it is Ice and Shadows and it smells like Peppermint Woods and it's an Owl Crate exclusive made by Fiction Bath Co. or company. I'm just gonna... Ooh, that's nice. It's very... I wouldn't say peppermint. I would say more eucalyptus -y peppermint, which I like better. Actually, let's try it out because my hands are very dry. Oh, actually, that's really nice. I like that. I like that a lot. It really sinks in. Oh, and it's inspired by Of Fire and Stars. And then we have Dame and Chaucer Leg Warmers. Our lives reflect our hearts. These were designed by Paperback Bones and uh, they were Serpent and Dove inspired. That's what I was thinking of. The second I saw the French, I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> nos vies reflétent nos cœurs. I don't know. I don't normally use leg warmers, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's not really my vibe, but I think that like in the house, maybe with a pair of leggings, it could keep your legs warm. And these are actually pretty cute. I like that they're very simple and kind of crocheted. Ooh, we have a juniper and ivy design thing. Oh, it was an ornament to go on a tree. It says, some things do not have to be said. Love speaks for itself. That's so cute. I actually like that it looks like an ornament, like an old style ornament. Oh, and it was inspired by the Wrath and the Dawn. Sorry if I'm kind of speeding through this. I just feel like I get nervous when I see so many boxes, so. I am very impressed with everything. I am just getting it to the chase. It's a puzzle. It's Elias and Laia. Oh, from an ember in the ashes. It says, dance under the stars with Laia and Elias at the Enchanting Moon Festival with this 300 piece jigsaw puzzle with artwork by Tiara. I'm gonna mess up this last name. I'm sorry in advance. Leo Medu at Bloody Damn It. <laughs> The artwork is stunning, and I haven't actually heard of this artist, but wow, I love it. I don't know why this is giving me Witcher vibes. Just me? Probably. I don't know. I love getting puzzles. I am a big puzzle person, and one day when I have, like, a house of my own, I'm just gonna have a whole little games area, mostly filled with puzzles. It says, decorative rolling pen. Use this embossed rolling pen to add beautiful wintery decoration elements to your sugar cookies, gingerbread, and icing. Oh, this is like a baking tool. I'm not a baker, but 
I do always want to bake. <laughs> oh, there's little Christmas trees and flowers and it looks like mistletoe. I, oh, and snowflakes. This is adorable. Oh, so you just like roll it onto like the dough, I'm assuming, before you put it into the oven. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, that was spinning silver inspired and it was designed by Michelle Gray. Cute. Spinning silver. I haven't, oh wait, I have, have I read that? No, I haven't. I'm confusing it with something. <laughs> what am I confusing it with? I need to like see it and then I'll know. By Naomi Novik. Oh, okay. I know what I'm confusing it with. I'm confusing it with the books by Naomi Novik that I have read. We have the book that came in the month of December's box and that's These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. That means that I now have three really cool editions of it. I'm not complaining. I'm really not. It's so subtle because if you look at it just like this, it looks like they barely did anything. But when you look closely, it almost looks like dark green fancy wallpaper. Oh, I mentioned I think in my last unboxing or in a haul or something. Did you guys see that moth? Where the heck did it come from and where did it go? Am I losing my mind? Um, oh, I hate it when I see a bug because then I just feel itchy. Like, what is it doing in here? Oh God, I feel itchy. I feel itchy. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything is totally okay. I just feel kind of scratchy now. So if you see me itching, it's because my mind is playing tricks on me. Oh, I said in my haul that these violence delights took place in the 1900s in New York City, and I was totally wrong. It's actually in the 20s in Shanghai. I don't know why I said New York. That was, I don't know. I kept thinking about flappers, and then all I could think of was the diviners, and that's not what this is about. Roma and Juliet are actually part of rival gangs, and they used to go out, but now they don't go out anymore, so it's kind of awkward because now they have to team up because there's some kind of threat happening in Shanghai that if their gangs don't team up for, they'll just both collapse. So, okay, I thought I saw something like gold hanging out from the bottom. Guys, what the heck? Look at this naked book. I'm actually really obsessed with this. I, oh God, I think I like it better naked. Look at the vibes. Oh, wow. This is stunning. And it's signed also by Chloe Gong. I've just been really obsessed with green. It's not a fair comparison. It's not a fair comparison. I don't remember what I was saying, but anyways, I want to read that book. And then we have uh, the little card with the letter from the author. And this was actually done in collaboration with Iron and Ink. And it's so simple. It's very reminiscent of the original cover. It's just black with red roses and white. I'm not a flower person. I'm not going to lie. They're Blossoms of some kind, potentially. Uh, jasmine flowers, I'm not sure. These violent delights have violent ends. Ooh, I love that. Now let's just go over the pamphlet. I mostly just want to go over the differences in the book, but yeah, it says they switched the bath background color to a lush green and the title font to a soft gold, a Shakespeare quote quiz, reading recommendations, an interview with Bloody Dammit, who is the artist of the jigsaw puzzle, a photo challenge when the owl babble will be, our Spotify playlist, which is in Fair Verona, and other releases they were excited about. That's a good time. And let's look really quick what we're going to be unboxing in this video, which is from Olympus with Love which is the theme of the January box and it'll have ooh a woodmark favorite item ah this one this one's pretty easy i'm not going to lie it's it's definitely the uh, jigsaw puzzle i just think puzzles are fun and the artwork for this one specifically is stunning 10 out of 10 this was a good box so now let's actually jump over to the fairy loot box of december and this is the reason that i opened it already it came in this box and this is how i saw it in my room so i opened it so if I don't look surprised, that's that's why. Ta-da! So no crinklies to be found as far as I remember, but that's okay. Everything was in pretty good condition. Uh, it's just a very woodsy looking spoiler card and it says thick as thieves, which is obviously the, the theme for the month of December. So I'm gonna set that there and we're gonna actually start with this, which was the thing that I was most excited about when I unboxed this. It's so cool, but it's a letter opener in the shape of a sword and it's a witcher sword like how sick is that it has the runes it has igni wait is it a witcher sword i could be totally making that up i think i made that up that's totally made up don't don't listen to me i made that up anyways so it's damaris from throne of glass by sarah j mass and it has like elvish runes on it it's really freaking cool oh it has the eye of elena in the hilt i mean this this is really this is a 10 out of 10 product i'm so excited about this because opening letters is surprisingly difficult and they don't tell you that that's going to be 
something you should get a letter opener for. I always thought it was so lame when people had letter openers and now I'm sitting there trying to open up a letter for like three minutes and I end up ripping everything. I don't know. I'm excited about it. Oh, a beanie. <laughs> I think the only thing I remembered about that box was the letter opener. So if I look surprised, that's why. We have a mountain dragon beanie and it's black and white. Ooh, I don't want to put it on. My hair is nice and clean, but imagine. <laughs> I'm a big fan of beanies. I love wearing beanies, even when they're like very fun like this. I just wear them around the house. But it is a Hobbit inspired beanie by J.R.R. Tolkien and the artwork is by Jez Hawk. The quality is really, really soft too. Ooh, we have a secret book. I don't think I actually opened this. I just saw that it was a secret book box. I actually really like the box for it. It's just simple daggers. I always cut out the panel and then save it just in case I want to use this because I feel like these look really cool. Ooh, look at that. I don't know if you can tell. There we go. It just has like three swords on it. We have like daggers pointing towards it. It's a like dusty grayish purpley color with like red hilts on the swords. This is very aesthetically pleasing to me. And inside we have like the usual quotes in it. It says, when you are who they expect you to be, they never look too closely. If you're furious, let it be fuel by Roshni Chakshi, the Gilded Wolves. You have nice manners for a thief and a liar, said the dragon by J.R.R. Tolkien in The Hobbit. A dream dirty and bruised is better than no dream at all from Lainey Taylor, Days of Blood and Starlight. And then on the inside, on the other half we have but then liars do make the best magicians and he happened to be exceptional from the last magician by lisa maxwell and then some people steal to stay alive and some steal to feel alive simple as that from a darker shade of magic and the last quote is there's no freedom quite like the freedom of being constantly underestimated scott lynch the lies of Locke lamora Ooh, i've never heard of that quote and i really like that quote actually i'm really into this theme for the month and once again, it was designed by Nover and Tail. I honestly always find a use for these secret books. All of the secret books that I have on my shelves are filled with things. <laughs> There's always a good use for them. I love them. Ooh, we have an art print. I can't tell who these people are. Do, do you know who they are? Oh, that's why. So it's the Friendship Group from the Raven Cycle by Maggie Steve Otter, and it was illustrated by Underdash St. Dree. Yeah, Raven Cycle. I tried to read the first book, and to be honest with you, it was good. It was just maybe a little bit boring for me. It was above average for me. It was just nothing that like caught my attention, I guess. And then you guys know I'm a huge fan of Halsey, so when I found out about the drama between like Maggie Steve Otter and Halsey, I was like, you know what? I'm just not gonna read it. That's just like maybe not gonna be my thing. But I can wholly respect that it's a lot of people's obsession. They look cute. I like them as a friendship group. They look adorable. I dig it as an art print. Maybe yeah, I only looked at the top stuff. I think I, that's that's what I did because I don't remember this notepad and it's really cool. It's like a memo pad. We have the main character from Children of Blood and Bone. We have some of like the symbolism in it. It's really, really pretty actually. And the artwork was by unicify.art. This is really cool. Ooh, and then we have a calendar. <sighs> I'm in March now. So January, we definitely have Percy Jackson. Look at him, he looks fine. Then, oh, are they all Percy Jackson inspired? February, we have Annabelle, Annabeth, Annabelle, Annabeth, Annabelle. You know. March, we have Rowan from Throne of Gloss. And then, or no, this is Aelin. Aelin. May, I'm assuming that's Laia. June, is it Laia? I think they're the characters from The Wrath and the Dawn. He looks really familiar. He looks like an actor, like an actual actor that is a person. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure who these characters are supposed to be and I'm getting anxious. Oh, and then from Darker Shade of Magic, Laia. Ah, I knew her. These all look like actors. Like she almost looks a little bit like Lily Collins-esque. Like I really enjoy the artist's work, but I feel like they pull very heavily from references. Then we have November. Oh, he's definitely from Scythe. And he looks exactly like an actor. Oh my gosh. Who? Who does he look like? Also from Scythe for December. A little embarrassing. I didn't know who anyone was. And I know them, but I just, I don't know. And then we have some of the tarot cards. Ooh, cool. So we have two of them, but we have the Queen of Swords, which is Bryce from Crescent City. And then we have King of Swords, which is Hunt, I'm assuming. And the art is by Ars28. Still on those. Ooh, guys, I'm seeing like sparkly red. Can you tell that they're sparkly? Ooh, pretty. 
we have the bookmark, the print, character print with the letter from the author on the back. And then we have the pamphlet. Ooh, they went back to like a glossy print. That's cool. Welcome to the Queen's City, a terrible place to live, an excellent place to die. Ooh, I'm really into the aesthetic so far. What is it? Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. And then the end papers. That's fancy. So it says, life in the Queen's City isn't easy, especially for a two-bit thief like rags. When his latest score goes sideways, he's nabbed by a royal sorcerer Morian, the last, who forces him to steal the six pieces of an immeasurably powerful ancient fey relic. Rags is still determined to somehow get away unscathed until he discovers that the relics Morian is after are actually people. A distractingly handsome fey prince who's been asleep for centuries, a queen's guard deserter with more honor than common sense, a daughter of a disgraced noble family who hits first and asks questions later, Sounds like my kind of gal. A deceptively sweet-natured prince, a member of the underground resistance, neither trusting nor trustworthy, and him, Rags. There's no way they can let Morian enact his dark plans, but, his, but six misfits against an exceptionally wicked enemy doesn't make for generous odds. Luckily, Rags is not generous. He's smart, and he has a plan that just might work. I like that that's like a twist on the, um kind of popular heist story that we've seen lately. We have our interview with the authors and then we have uh, what is exclusive about the book, which is the shimmery sprayed edges signed by the authors, foil embossing on the hardcover, artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket. Ooh, wait, let's look at that. I love how this book looks naked. It's a giant gecko. He reminds me of like the gecko from Frozen 2, but like all grown up. Who did this artwork? Really into that. Bloody Damn It. This is the first time I'm hearing about Bloody Damn It and they're already really impressing me. So cool. Theme for the next box that we're going to be opening up, which is Greek mythology. I'm not going to lie. I already spoiled myself for what the book is, but I'm so excited about this next box. So yeah. Oh, I just realized the boxes are under my mic. So give me like two seconds. Oh my gosh. No, I see that. I see the bug. It's on my ring light. That's so gross. Like, where did it come from? Who left the front door open long enough for it to get in? Because I'm going to yell at them. I forgot to mention what my favorite item in the Fairy Loot December box was. I feel like it was pretty obvious. It was the secret book. I feel like it's always going to be the secret book. It's just, it's just so good, you know? So let's get into the January Owl Crate. Ta-da! Ooh, there aren't any Crete Queens. That's pretty cool. Ooh, I think it's going to be the same book. That's cool. I'm fine with that. The spoiler card is amazing. It's Medusa and she's slaying someone. We love that for her. The theme is from Olympus with love and this is the spoiler card. I just love the black and gold look. First thing we have here is a tea. I love getting little loose teas. This one's from Riddle's Tea Shop and it's Nectar of the Gods. I'm obsessed with this. It looks like it has very like fruity and vanilla-y caramelly flavors which sounds literally amazing. It's gluten-free nut and dairy-free and it's a decaf tea. I'm a big tea and coffee gal. I like both. Next let's grab whatever this is this is so cool <laughs> okay i don't know if any of you guys saw my setup for my actual journal it's on my other channel so i'll link it up above if you haven't seen it i spent hours hours drawing out the moon phases it doesn't look half this cool in my opinion and we got like a cool tapestry that already has it on there i love this i'm hanging this up i'm i love it this is really cool this is my vibe it's beautiful it shows you when all the moons are gonna be in upon all the moons when the moon is gonna be in different positions it says eden cook included two of our favorite olympians when designing this gorgeous lunar calendar tapestry now you can follow the moon's phases with artemis the goddess of the moon and athena the goddess of wisdom whose penchant for owls is something we can totally understand oh i love that that's cute Ooh, we have a pin banner i love it and it has like the gold leaf filigree stuff that people used to wear around their heads you know what i'm talking about this is cool i love pin banners so it's designed by michelle gray oh and then the wood mark oh wow this is beautiful so it says i would know him in death at the end of the world and the other side says there are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as stars once a year brush the earth such a constellation was he to me it's romantic that's very romantic so it was designed by In the Reeds, and it was inspired by Madeline Miller's two beloved Greek mythology retellings, The Song of Achilles and Circe, which I love them both. I love them both. What is this? 
Hermes letterboard. Use this mini letterboard to create. Ooh, I've wanted one of these for forever. Cool. I feel like I'll probably end up painting it or something to kind of go more with my rooms and stuff since I don't normally use bare wood. And then you have like the letters to put into it. I've wanted one of these for forever. So this is really cool. And I love that they did it as Hermes because the messenger of the gods. This is really bringing back all of my like Greek mythology obsession that I've used to have, still have. Just forget about a lot. Oh, and it includes a zippered pouch for letter storage. Wait, I wanna see. That's cool, and it said featuring the god himself. That's a nice touch. That's a really nice touch. Good job, Alcrate. I feel like unsurprisingly, the book is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a book that I was actually going to pre-order and I'm now pretty glad that I didn't because you know, here and I'm I'm expecting it to also potentially be in the fairy loot that we're gonna unbox. So this is so pretty. So the actual classic cover is like all white and this one has like black in the background and accentuates like the shadows. I'm really into that. We have the, oh, yep, see, it looks like this. And the letter from the author, it says, you may deny the fates, but they will not deny you. Fighting them will not save you from what is ahead. Good map. Let's see. Oh, that's a good naked book. Oh no, she got a little dinged up. I don't know where that accent came from. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That wasn't even very good. Um, anyways, so it says, every seven years, the Aegon begins. As punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals. They are hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines, all eager all eager to kill a god and seize their divine power and immortality. Long ago, Lore Perseus fled that brutal world, turning her back on the hunt's promises of eternal glory after her family was murdered by a rival line. For years, she pushed away any thought of revenge against the man, now god, responsible for their deaths. Yet, as the next hunt dawns over New York City, two participants seek her out. Castor, a childhood friend, Lore believed to be dead, and Athena, one of the last of the original gods, now gravely wounded. The goddess, offer the goddess offers Lore an alliance against their mutual enemy and a way to leave the Aegon behind forever, but Lore's decision to rejoin the hunt, binding her fate to Athena's, will come at a deadly cost, and it may not be enough to stop the rise of a new god with the power to bring humanity to its knees. This is cool. Oh, and it is also signed by the author. Unsurprisingly, I feel like. But let's open up the pin. Ooh, and this one was done in collaboration with IC Designs, and it says the eyes of the gods are upon you, and it has Medusa on it. This is really nice. It's so simple. It's very clean. Real quick, which features obviously the artwork from the spoiler card. A interview with Alexandra Bracken. We have the differences between their edition of lore and the original edition of lore. Then we have discover your Homeric epithet. Oh, let's see. Okay. My birth month is August. So sound minded. We'll let that slide. First initial, the bold. Sound minded, the bold. That sounds boring, right? I, I don't know how you can be bold and sound-minded. I feel like you have to be a little bit not sound of mind to be bold. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Anyways, then we have reads that are similar to lore. We have an interview with Riddle's Tea Shop, the photo challenge, the Owl Babble, which will be February 26th. We have From Olympus with Love's Spotify playlist. And then we have other releases for this month. Next month's theme is going to be Magic Unleashed. Ooh, fancy. Every February box will include a book tin designed by Forensics and Flowers. Oh, cute. Oh, a book tin. That's like their secret book things, I think. Or is it like this? I don't have as much use for these thingies, but I think they look really nice on my shelves. Favorite object, I think it has to be, it has to be the, the tapestry with all the moon phases. I just think it's really, really cool. And now let's get into last box. Look at that. We have the spoiler card, which is so godly. It's just in gold and white, and we have two gods on it. It's, it's beautiful. And the theme is Greek mythology, plain and simple. Love that. So I'm gonna set that down. Uh, they actually do have crinklies in their box. Crazy. And Alcrate didn't. Ooh, I bet these are coasters. Oh no, it's a ceramic trinket tray. Even better. I have so many rings. Okay, and it says Cupid and Psyche. I'm obsessed. I want my house to look like this. I just want my house to be like a museum for beautiful statues and beautiful art and then I can just like sit and stare at everything. But I don't have that kind of money, you know? That's okay, that's okay. This is beautiful. Like this is, I'm obsessed. This is better than I could have imagined. I love this so much. 
10 out of 10. It was designed by Tara. Aw, from the legendary love story between a mortal and a god. Dang, Fairy Lou, you're trying to unfreeze my frozen heart. I see you. We got a rounded one of these in one of their boxes, and now we get the square one. I'm telling you, when I have my own kitchen, I still probably won't use these because I would be nervous that Adam would accidentally burn them, but they're gonna be in there on display, like on like those little rack things, like... <laughs> It says, did you know food is infinitely more scrumptious when you're in love? And it's from Lovely War by Julie Berry. I don't, I don't know that book, but that's a cute quote. I don't know if that's true though. I can appreciate that this is all very lovey-dovey. I don't know why it is, but I can appreciate it. And it was designed by KDP Letters. Book sleeve. Nice. It says, but in a solitary life, there are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as stars once a year brush the earth. Madeline Miller. So the same quote that's actually on that woodmark. I actually kind of love that it's the same quote. This one looks very Cersei. It has like the orangey tones and the black, like just like the cover of Cersei. This is beautiful. I'm into it. I really like the quality of the fairy loot ones and I like that they have zippers at the top so that like you can also like throw in some annotation stuff if you like to. Zip everything up so that nothing falls out. I like that. Security. And it was designed by Chatty Nora. It's a metal bookmark. You know, I don't do the whole competing thing anymore because I didn't think it was very fun. I just, you know, I'll let you guys decide at the end of the video what you ended up liking more, but I just don't like to put things against each other because it's not meant to be that way. But if I were, these would be very good boxes to compare. <laughs> oh my gosh, I should use my letter opener because I'm having a hard time. Oh wait, I packed it. I guess I'll just use my adult letter opener like a true assassin. I am not even that big of a pink fan. Like, I don't mind pink anymore. I used to be very against it. I don't mind it at all anymore. I love their metal bookmarks. Like, I'm really, really a big fan of Fairy Loot's metal bookmarks. They feel like they can hurt someone. They're very high quality. They're so cool. It's an enamel bookmark, and it was made in collaboration with Monolime Art. You guys know my obsession with Monolime Art at this point, and it depicts Athena, the goddess of war and wisdom. Mm. And the owl. That's so cool. These are some good boxes. Like these are really good boxes. Either one that you ended up getting for January, you would likely be extremely happy with. I have no complaints yet. Oh, it's a patch. I still need to make that jean jacket with all my cool patches on it. Oh, this is so sick. It's Medusa. And it was actually designed by Aliessa's World. I might be not pronouncing that correctly. And we have a print. I just saw it. It's Sick. It's a Camp Half-Blood print. This is beautiful. I love this aesthetic. I love the gray tones and the pop of like yellow gold. Percy Jackson art print, obviously. Uh, it was actually designed by Ars 28. Ooh, I really like how Ars 28 does like the pops of color in their art. And now let's look at the tarot cards. So we have the four and the three of wands. I think these are characters from Wrath and the Dawn. Am I right? I was right. I shouldn't be that impressed with myself. I've read these look anyways. And it's also drawn by Ars28. I keep these because I like to use them in journaling. This one's all ripped up, so probably not this one, but you know. So let us look at the book. I'm obsessed already. I mean, this is actually the reason why I spoiled myself. I'll talk about it once the book's out, but anyways. So first we have the fairy scoop. Ooh, the bookmark, which has the man on it. The character... This is so cool. This is giving me like Bratz vibes. Like the artist that used to draw Bratz. I don't know if it's just the eyes, but I think it's also the hair. Like it's very much giving me those vibes and I love it. And let's grab book. She's backwards. Hunt or be hunted. And it's lore. And this one doesn't even have like the normal head on it. It just looks like marble. And then you can see the eye. I didn't know that the spine looked like this. This is really a pretty book. And then to top it off, this is the only part I knew about, the snake stenciled spine. I saw Fairy Loot post a picture with this and a few other of their sprayed edges that they've posted before. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that stenciled spine? I need it in my collection right now. I, I, I how did I miss this? I need that. And I clicked on the picture and I was like, oh my God, it's lore. And I was like, oh my God, wait, that came out in January. <laughs> it's probably in the box and I probably just spoiled myself. And it's not something I'm disappointed about because this is this is, I didn't know that it looked like this and I'm really obsessed. The games have begun and she's playing for her life. 
and the inside is like a yellow marble. This is so cool. And we have our signature. Look at that book naked. It says the games have begun and she's playing for her life. I like the direction that they took where they didn't write lore anywhere else, like that they wrote different things on the spines. I think that's really cool. I feel like more books should do something like that. And look at this print. I'm I'm obsessed. I really, I, I think they're very attractive people. I like this art style a lot. Who drew it? Liz Art under dash Zardonix. The character art print was done by Running Quill under dash art. I won't read it again, but wow. Really quick, let's go over the fairy scoop. Our interview with Alexandra Bracken, and then we have about the new book, which has an exclusive cover, stenciled sprayed edges, a digital signature, a foil design on the hardcover, custom end papers, artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket, and the read along will start on March 1st. For next month, we have what the future holds. Ooh, it's a very cool sci-fi looking thing. Where might humans be in a thousand years from now? Will there be artificial intelligence roaming the streets, flying cars, or will we be living in a dystopian dystopian world. I feel like it's going to be dystopian. What do you guys think? And <laughs> that might just be the pessimist in me. I'm starting to discover that maybe I'm not as much of a realist as I thought I was because my boyfriend's an optimist. I think I might actually just be a pessimist and I wish I wasn't, I guess. It says, what if we discovered some form of magnic? Magnic? <laughs> it says magic. What if we discovered some form of magic? The future holds limitless possibilities, and this theme explores those ideas. You can expect items inspired by War Cross, Vicious, Red Rising, The Lunar Chronicles, and more. I'm gonna say, like, one of the things that I think um, Fairy Loot really has been succeeding at for a year now has been just the exclusive books that they come out with. Like, the quality of them is really incredible. Like, just the sprayed edges. I think that every single book has had sprayed edges in at least a year. I feel like it hasn't, they haven't sent one without sprayed edges in that long. So that alone is just really, really cool about them. Okay, my favorite, ooh, favorite item. Shoot, it's kind of between the bookmark and the trinket dish. I think it's the trinket dish. I just think it's really neat. It's really, really neat. But that's it. These boxes were all really, really cool. I'm a huge fan of Fairy Loot and Alcrate, and I'm so grateful for them for sending me their boxes, even when I apparently didn't unbox them for forever. So very sorry to them. I am going to be better, guys, about unboxing them monthly. I have just been in kind of a life slump, not just reading slump. So I will be filming the new boxes. So the February boxes in the next few days. So it'll probably go up next week. Yeah, look forward to those. It's also going to just be like a life update. There is a lot going on and I just want to kind of maybe chit chat about it. Not too much, but just kind of give you a better idea. I mentioned a few <laughs> very vague things in my bullet journal video for March. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it above. There's just some changes happening in my life, which aren't bad necessarily. It's just, we'll talk more about it in the, in those videos. Again, it's, 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 Nothing serious, nothing to worry about. I'm not being vague on purpose. It's just I need more information first, you know? But that's gonna be it for this video today, guys. Thank you so, so much to watch it to watching. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will leave everything linked down below for either of these if you want to check them out. And also as well as my discount codes if you want to use those. I don't get any kickback from that. That's just for you guys. But yeah, that'll be it for this video today, guys. Uh let's let's think of an emoji. I really kind of want it to be like you know, like, uh, what, what, what should we do? Like a lightning bolt? Yeah, I'm feeling a lightning bolt. I just saw like the ones on there. I'm not gonna lie. So leave a lightning bolt emoji if you want to. And also just like, let me know. I'm kind of curious. What do you think is gonna happen in a thousand years? Do you think it's gonna be really cool and like flying cars and artificial intelligence and all that stuff? Or do you think it's gonna be a dystopian? Please don't tell me I'm the only pessimist out there because I honestly feel like it'll be a dystopian. That, that might just be me. So anyways, that's gonna be it for this video today, guys. I love y'all so, so much. And I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.